I'm gonna jump right into this. So the first food that you may wanna consider eating more of, believe it or not, is garlic. Now I have the mechanisms here, okay? I'm not just talking crazy talk here. The reason that garlic could be beneficial when it comes down to insulin resistance is because it increases what is called nitric oxide synthase. Okay, nitric oxide synthase is an enzyme that allows the production of nitric oxide. Now, you might be thinking here like, why is nitric oxide important for insulin resistance? Well, with that, we have to kind of dive into a little bit of detail as far as mechanisms here. So there was a study that was published in the journal Circulation, and what this study ultimately demonstrated is that when you are insulin resistant, it leads to what is called endothelial dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is where the cells that are in your circulatory system, in your arteries, they don't really function well. So you don't get that elasticity or that dilation to the blood vessel. Now this vasodilation is very, very, very important for, well, overall health, nutrient delivery, and whatnot. But the thing is, is that insulin stimulates nitric oxide production. You see, insulin gets this bad rap all the time, but insulin is still necessary. And without insulin being produced properly, you're not producing nitric oxide. So you have this interrupt that therefore affects how much your blood vessels can dilate. And think about it, it's a vicious circle. Then your blood vessels don't dilate, then you don't get nutrients delivered, then you don't get glucose delivered, then you don't get insulin delivered, and it compounds insulin resistance. So this is an interesting body of research that's starting to evolve. Possibly there's even a link between hypertension and insulin resistance. Insulin resistance leading to endothelial dysfunction, which makes the arteries not really dilate, which leads to hypertension. So this pattern interrupt with something like garlic could be very, very important. Now I'm gonna rattle off a few other foods as well because there's some very interesting things that you can do utilizing different pathways with nitric oxide to potentially help out insulin resistance. After today's video, I also put a link down below for Organifi's red juice. So red juice from Organifi has things like beetroot powder in it. Now beetroot is probably the most famous nitric oxide stimulator that's really out there. So the cool thing about their red juice is if you don't think you're getting enough in the way of fruits because maybe you're limiting carbohydrates, they do have a very unique way of getting it to you. So basically it only has two grams of sugar in an entire serving and you're getting multiple servings of fruits and vegetables in it. So it's really, really cool with beetroot powder being on the forefront. Not to mention they also have adaptogens like ashwagandha in it to help you kind of modulate stress. So really a cool thing, big thank you to them. And that link down below using that code will get you 20% off, not just Organifi Red Juice, but whatever you want. If you want their green juice, if you want some of their turmeric chocolate, like really good stuff. So I put that link down below so you can save 20% off. Just make sure you use that code that's down below in the description. Again, if you're someone that wants to eat fruit, but you're just like, ah, I can't get all the carbs in, I can't get all that sugar, totally an option for you. When I'm going very strict keto or low carb, I definitely use this like multiple times per day. So that link is down below. Now the next one is one you're gonna be happy about, dark chocolate, which I have talked about in detail in another video. But there is evidence that suggests that the flavonoids in dark chocolate actually increase nitric oxide levels. So there was a study that was published in the American Society of Hypertension that demonstrated that the flavonoids or the polyphenols in dark chocolate are definitely linked to nitric oxide production. But independently of that, the polyphenols in dark chocolate actually help out with insulin production as well, meaning that independent of this whole nitric oxide pathway, they are very, very good for insulin resistance. Even so much as having like an 80% or 85% dark chocolate, it still has a little bit of sugar. The polyphenols and the flavonoids in the dark chocolate potentially override that minimal amount of sugar. It's pretty fascinating. Next one is meat. Yep, believe it or not, like good sources of good quality meat, like red meat, things like that. Coenzyme Q10, and especially in things like organ meat where you're gonna get higher quantities of coenzyme Q10. So coenzyme Q10, yes, we know that it's good for what's called the electron transport chain. We know that it's good for mitochondrial health. We know it's good for energy manufacturing in the body, but there is an increasing new body of evidence that's starting to suggest that coenzyme Q10 is related with nitric oxide production as well. This doesn't mean you go eat like totally overboard on a bunch of just low quality meats, but it does mean that if you're deficient in that good quality meat, yeah, you could be deficient in the coenzyme Q10. I don't always recommend the coenzyme Q10 supplement, but if you don't feel like you're getting enough meat, it might be a time and a place for it. The next one, the obvious one we've talked about is beets. Beets are probably the most potent dietary 
way to drive up your nitric oxide levels. There's even a study that demonstrated that having some beetroot juice powder or beetroot juice can elevate nitric oxide levels up to 21% within 45 minutes. So if you're talking like a pre-workout type thing, beets might just be phenomenal for that, okay? But overall, for just a quick shot in the arm to drive up nitric oxide levels, beets are the bee's knees. They are definitely the gold standard with that. I like to get like the pre-cooked beets. I don't really like eating beet juice because that's a large concentration of sugar, but the actual beets that you can get pre-cooked at Costco or Whole Foods that are in the little package, those are perfect. Just eat a couple of those pre or post-workout, you're in good shape. Now, this next one is a very interesting one. There's something out there called citrulline. Now you see it in supplements all the time, citrulline, malate, things like that. Citrulline is sort of a, uh, like arginine, but a little bit different and that's more stable. Okay, if you were to just take in straight amino acid arginine, you could drive up nitric oxide levels, but it's so unstable, it doesn't really do the job the way you would want it to. So citrulline is more stable in supplement form. Well, I like to literally, occasionally, not all the time, eat watermelon during my workouts. Now I have a reason for this, okay? The citrulline is obviously very good when it comes down to nitric oxide. That's good for insulin resistance. So its own whole thing there. But what's very interesting is that the citrulline during a workout, not to mention a little bit of carbohydrates during a workout, could really be beneficial. And I've talked about this before. Carbohydrates during your actual workout, sounds crazy. That is a period of time where the cells can take up glucose without ever needing insulin. It's called insulin independent glucose uptake. So I love consuming, I don't know, 15, 20 grams of carbohydrates from watermelon during a workout because A, I get the citrulline that helps me with a pump and the nitric oxide production, which is good for my heart and my blood pressure. But then I'm also getting the glucose sucked up into the muscle, helping the body learn how to use glucose even without insulin. So it helps you from an insulin resistance standpoint twofold in two totally different ways. So to recap, maybe one ounce of unsweetened or very lightly sweetened super dark chocolate per day could be good. Beetroot juice or straight beets, or if you wanna use the Organifi, that works too, like pre or post workout. Watermelon, intra-workout is great. Garlic, phenomenal because it acts as sort of a catalyst to help the synthesis of this. So season things with garlic and eat some good quality meat and maybe season your meat with garlic. I'll see you tomorrow.